The Brooklyn Nets have been one of the hottest teams in the NBA since Thanksgiving. Give it up. Durant for But when they heard about the news that Kevin Durant has a knee injured and is expected to miss a month at least, people naturally began to wonder what this would mean for the team. It's no surprise that people were wondering how the team would hold up as the NBA is a league of superstars and anytime you lose one, it hits the team hard. What's up everybody? You're tuned into Mad Hoops, bringing you the hottest NBA content on YouTube as usual. Let's get right into it. The Nets decided to make a change after a poor 2-5 start with Hall of Fame point guard Steve Nash leading the charge. Nash had a 94-67 record with the team since he was hired in 2022, but the team needed a change and KD had been very vocal about his desire to have Nash replaced in the offseason. The Nets didn't listen and tried to give it a go, but after the start they had, they knew it was time. They decided to go with Jacques Vaughn as the head coach for the team and went 23-7 for the first 30 games after he was appointed. This was the best 30-game start to a season for a head coach in franchise history. This move really goes to show how important a head coach is and how having star players isn't the only recipe for success. Having a solid system and a system that caters to the team's strengths has a huge impact on the way the team performs night in and night out. Now, let's not forget that the Nets still have NBA champion and veteran Kyrie Irving leading the team. It's just that KD was playing out of his mind before this injury happened. After getting his results back from his MRI, turned out that he suffered an MCL sprain and is going to be reevaluated after one month. The Nets are seated second in the Eastern Conference and have been playing arguably the best basketball in the league as of late. Durant was averaging 29.7 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, and 5.3 dimes before he went down after a collision with Jimmy Butler of the Miami Heat. It's tough luck for the Nets because they were playing so well and had such a smooth rhythm going as a team before this happened. They are leading their division now after a slow start to the season and people were already beginning to talk about if Simmons was a good fit, if KD was still able to play at a high level at 34 years old, and what the deal was with Kyrie, especially after the whole incident with the book he posted in his story. We all remember. It seemed there was always something negative to say about the Brooklyn Nets for the first few months of the season, until they started clicking and Kyrie was back to playing the way he's capable of. Then Durant took his play to the superstar level we all know and expect from him. So Moving forward after this injury, what does it mean for the team now that Durant is out leading up to the All-Star break? To say the least, they're in good hands. Kyrie Irving is averaging 26 points per game, 4.8 rebounds, and 4.8 assists a game, and is considered one of the most skilled players ever, as well as best ball handlers to ever step foot on the court. Kyrie has managed to bring his game back after all the dust has settled from his off-the-court controversies, and now he can focus on what he does best, play ball. Any team that Kyrie has on it has been known to come with a lot of off-the-court noise, but there is no denying his greatness. He can shoot from anywhere, he can weave through the defense with his craft and dribbling abilities and is one of the best finishers ever around the rim and in the paint. They have players contributing in other areas as well. Nick Claxton is averaging 2.6 blocks a game Trent turns the corner, blocked by Claxton. and is really helping their inside presence on defense. Let's also not forget that they have sharpshooters Joe Harris and Seth Curry who will be taking on a bigger role in KD's absence. Seth Curry is one of the highest three-point percentages all time, and even though Harris has been in a slump for the past season or so, he can still shoot the ball with the best of them. Harris shooting on the fly, another Curry has it, fires, and hits again! Now, I can't talk about the Brooklyn Nets without bringing up former Rookie of the Year Ben Simmons. Say all you want about him, his work ethic, his lack of ability on offense, but he is currently leading the team in rebounds and steals and is still a terrific defender on the ball and as a rotation help defender. Simmons has been highly scrutinized since his last playoff outing with the Sixers, where at times he seemed afraid of the moment and was scared to shoot the ball. He then refused to play for the Sixers the next season, claiming he was injured and had other issues going on, which also led to more scrutiny. He was the talk of the NBA for the first few months of last season until it was clear he wasn't going to play until he was traded or gone from the team. It seemed like nobody wanted him until the Nets showed interest and ended up signing him. Lastly, here I want to talk about breakout player and Japanese sniper Yuta Watanabe. Yuta went undrafted in the 2018 NBA draft after playing at the college level for the George Washington Colonials. He played for the Nets on their summer league team and then eventually signed a two-way deal with the Grizzlies and their G League team, the Memphis Hustles. He then went on to play for the Raptors from 2020 to 2022 and then became a free agent in the summer of 2022. He then finally signed a contract with the Nets and seems to have found a home this season. He is currently 
currently shooting lights out from three, averaging 51.9% and absolutely exploding in a couple games so far this season. Watanabe in the corner again. Knox. Watanabe for three. Yes, coming on that as Watanabe goes. He has been such a bright spot and an unpredicted story that the team has seemed to rally around and feed off. Now, as a team, they're not overly spectacular in any one metric. They're above average in assists per game, sitting 8th. They're sitting 5th in opponents PPG, which is one of the reasons why they have been so hot lately. It's easier to win when your opponents are scoring less points. There's not been any controversy as of late surrounding the team, which is a big reason why they have been playing so well. They seem to always be in the spotlight, lots of it granted, for good and bad things. With all that surrounding the team and having the media always asking questions that aren't even related to basketball, it's hard to focus on the game. Looking ahead at the rest of the season, the Nets actually have one of the easiest schedules for the remainder of the season. With KD out and All-Star break coming up, it shouldn't be as big of a noticeable impact due to their schedule and the time off for the All-Star break. The biggest question mark in basketball, or sports for that matter, is health. We've seen it in the playoffs every year, but even in the regular season, it has a huge impact on a team's success. If the Nets can stay healthy and KD doesn't rush back, they can come back full swing on his return and maintain that number two seed in the East and be a legit contender for the championship. The handles, Irving gets it to go and a foul! Shoot, Durant on the drive, the runner, he hits it. Since they made the change to their coaching staff, all the players seem to have been re-energized and focused. The proof is in their record. If they stay at this pace and continue to play at this level, there's no reason why they won't be in the conference finals. They have all the talent and capable defenders. They have more than enough shooting, and when KD is with Kyrie, they have two all-time scorers in NBA history on the court at the same time. That's how scary it is. That's how scary their potential is. Drop a comment on if you think KD's injury is going to affect the Nets' second seed chances, or if you think he may be out longer. Do you think the Nets have a good enough supporting cast around Kyrie and Durant to go all the way? Let me know. Peace.